Ich hab so Heimweh nach dem Kurfürstendamm. Ich hab so Sehnsucht nach meinem Berlin. Und seh ich auch in Frankfurt, München, Hamburg oder Wien, die Leute sich bemühen. Berlin bleibt doch Berlin. Ich hab so Heimweh nach dem Kurfürstendamm. But Berlin remains Berlin. An old music hall song. Now it's up there in neon letters, five feet high. An advertiser's announcement. I'm trying to sell you Berlin. I'm trying to sell Berlin, Berlin. It's not much more convincing than the rest of them. Half the buildings in the central district of Berlin were completely destroyed in war. All this area run here in the heart of West Berlin. And most of the building pretty undistinguished. This could be Düsseldorf or Tokyo. But I'll tell you something. In an odd way, that sounds right. Berlin does remain Berlin. If that man in the commercial came up to me and offered to swap New Berlin two of my old rooms or misses, I didn't think I would. What makes a place interesting? That somehow it comes to live in your imagination. So you want to complete the picture like a jigsaw puzzle or a crossword. Well, that's the way Berlin is. A city of hints, fragments, echoes. Some of the ever turned recent ones. The bash commercial is uber in this whole downtown area is a product of 50s. Berlin was supposed to be the outpost of the West, the showcase of capitalism. All this financed partly in order to taunt and tease the communists, which it did. It also succeeded in manning a whole generation of its own citizens. Berlin, with Paris, was the birthplace of extraordinary Marxist revival of the late 60s. A lot of the people I know here are Marxists. They hate all this gloss. They hate all this buying and selling. Everything buy and sell here. Even the customers are wrapped as peeling as processed cheese. I like it. I think trading is a central to human activity of speech. It's dangerous too, but then everything that's alive is dangerous. All the same. The Cold War is now one of the starter of history, with the dust already beginning to set on it. And when the mines fade, you begin to hiss the traces of earlier strata. Architectural details, even here in the Kurstendam. Doorways, windows, balconies, and the people. It's city of old people, a quarter of the population of over 60. Just off the Kurstendam, a little tilt for the past was collected against the railway arches. Inside this door, an entire work of our studios and the romantic revival style of 1889. It's like being in Pompeii or ancient Rome. You can cons. Mine rushes to fill in the whole life and history of the Roman Empire. But what you glimpse here isn't the remote part. It's the history of the last hundred years or so. Modern Europe excavated. Our own times. Gradually, the eye begins to pick out these details from that ground noise. A cast iron pump, a cast iron frog forever scrambling for a foothold. A bar sign like an expression of painting. Engine that brought to Norwich, Berlin. Somewhere behind these walls lurks one of the world's great imperial capitals. Somewhere among this brimstone is the sour, sweet, decaying world of the twenties that we know from Mischel's novels and Brecht's plays and gross caricatures. And somewhere behind that is the solid, complex world of Berlin before the interesting process of decay began. A mock medieval port. A Kaiser changed Finner into gold braid coat, Nebiges, the Order of Garter. Industry, wealth, poverty, a revolution, the civil war. Gradually, a complete mashed townscape begins to assemble in mind. And behind these doors are books, archives of photographs and film, human memories. This is why I want to come and take another look at Berlin. Because I thought that just for a moment, in odd flash and brief glimpses, the past might seem to come alive in front of one's eyes.
And where are all those people today? Here, preserved oil paint and punish. Pickled in the acid vision of George Gross. of society. This is Bay Day. Because when we get put in now, we sit through the eyes of Borch Chris and the other artists painted in the Mac Beckham, for example. This Berlin's high season. The golden twenties. The golden, screaming, starring twenties. Here was the money. Here was power. Here was the misery and the hysteria. And these eyes painted in a style which can be known as new objectivity. It's ordinary now to think that these raging comments on disintegrating world were ever thought of as objective. Hypermake precise portraits about objects. These people are gaining out of the world where a war has been lost. A revolution destroyed most of the political landmass. The revolution has been destroyed its turn. The current collapse of 120 newspapers, periodicals, and frequent political murders. The golden years, if any were older, were brief. From 1924, when the currency was stabilized, to 1929, Berlin, like the rest of the world, funded in bankruptcy and unemployment. This is Leakes' portrait of other art family. They look as if they've all seen a ghost. A world of ghosts. Even the girl in the picture of the wall got the same look in her eye. A sardonic vision of a corrupt industrial metropolis in the moment of nightmare equilibrium between one cataclysm and the next. Why do we take so strongly to this one particular aspect of Berlin? Perhaps because we see our own times like that. Or perhaps, because we like to something like that, in terms of drama we can now understand. The hung glass framed these pictures are of the present. This is the new National Gallery building, designed in the 60s by Mies and Aurora. This is our world, sometimes, at its best, when we're housing bank deposits and work of art. And this is what it looks like when we're housing other things, such as people. A nightmare, probably, but our own nightmare, all electric, easy to clean, by social security, not a nightmare of the twenties. But then, how many people in Berlin at the time saw the place to be eyes gross, Beckman, Dix? Much more often, I should think, they saw it like this. These are the Impressionist paintings by artists of France have been known less early in the Berlin Museum. In Britain, we associate Berlin with Impressionism. Impressionism is Paris, and Paris is Impressionism. It came late to Berlin at the turn of the century, but it had native roots as well as French ones. And it was superseded by Expressionism and the new objectivity of the 20s. Throughout the 20s and 30s, there were painters, good painters, who went on paint Berlin in this kind of way, and seeing it in this kind of way. It's interesting. Now we see Berlin through their eyes, it doesn't seem quite the big, grey, historical place that we always imagined. There are trees here and gardens. The sun occasionally shines. Even the predominant greys and browns look less like field grey and brown shirt brown. They seem more understated and elegant, a sign of metropolitan sophistication. The whole place seems more like, well, 
Well, Paris. It's clear why it looked more agreeable. The French Impressionists are painting a city of bourgeoisie. They are looking at a city which brought the upper middle classes wealth and power, a city which these new classes then accommodated their own style and taste. It's the world of these people, the world of intelligent, successful men, attractive, cultural wise, and charming children. This is family of one of the artists. No big eye portraits on their walls. Above all, it's the world of this painter, Max Liebmann. This is a self-portrait at the age of 78. Liebmann was one of the group who broke away from the Academy in 1889 and founded the Berlin Secession, which launched Impressionism in the teeth of the Kaiser's approval. He painted the printers and prelates of the high bourgeoisie, fashionable composers and writers, the collectors and academics, the merchants and bankers. What a good likeness, said one satisfied customer, a peculiar repellent brewer. Yes, said Liebmann, good enough to kiss you. When Sun, who was visiting his studio, fitted on about how marvelous it must be to sit there and paint until the sun threw its last rays over the city, Bellman snarled, Don't be daft, four o'clock cash up. Out in the western suburbs of the middle classes, though, you find more and more of the impression of Berlin still surviving. Not grey and historical at all, but soft and green and comfortable. I think these trains change for a start. Well, yes, but here's the city railway, by one of the 700 anomalies on which Berlin is built. Yes, but run from East Berlin, including all the communalized of the Stabroker Belt. East Germans have a reputation for keeping things as they are, or as they were 40 years ago, even when they're operating here in West Berlin. Look at the state. Trees on the banks, with malaprene oil and creosote. Nothing much happening. This is just like the grimy yellow wooden station in the outer suburbs of London that I used to hang around my childhood. Just breathing in the railway atmosphere. All it's missing is those advertisements of Varal, a big vapor run. Look at this. Time for lavatories off in the old goth black less script. Don't see much of that in West Berlin now. And how about this? The name of the East German Corporation that runs the railways. Which are Reichsbahn. German Imperial Railways. There were three Reichs in German history. The Holy Roman Empire, the Second Reich set up by Bismarck under the Kaiser, and Hitler's Third Reich. None of them is much commemorated in public in Berlin these days. Only here, under the use of the German Democratic Republic. And the further out you go, the more solid and continuous past comes. All these suburbs are grouped around the edges of the Grunewald, the huge strip of forest enclosed with the frontier of West Berlin. This is where Kaiser used to hunt. Look at this notice, warning you to keep the dog on the lead. There really are wild boar here. Some I know told me he was driving through the Grunewald one night. He saw a 17 wild boar walk across the road in front of the car. And in the midst of the forest, a chain of lakes. Sure, we hit all the western suburbs, including Grunewald and Minair Slama. And we stand in the midst of it all, enjoying their picturesque misery. It ought to be allowed. Look at these houses. If we could just get a glimpse through these windows, we'd see a calm bourgeois interior of the impression it painted. A world of warm colours and humble objects. Modest objects, just sitting their use. No chromium date, no plastic, but no over 19th century look either. This is Max Liebmann, has painted himself at home with his family. Because at the end of his life, he moved out from his fashionable apartment and centre to these quiet suburbs. This is his house, at the edge of one of Berlin's lakes. As time was a freeman of the city, a president of the academy had insisted from. Well, that's the way it goes. But in Liebermann's case, there was one further twist an old story. In 1933, when the Nazis came to power, he resigned all his public offices and consigned himself to Olivia. He was 86, and his sour Berlin humour remained as sharp as ever. When someone asked him how he was, he replied, Only one trouble. I can't eat as much as I'd like to spew. He died in 1935. 
just in time, perhaps, he's a Jew. This present lakeside suburb, incidentally, is Vanze. It was a house just up the road here, another comfortable imposing house on the waterfront. The Nazi leaders met in 1951 and decided upon what they called the final solution of Jewish problem, extermination and industrial methods of all Jews in Europe. Here's God here. The Linders are very proud of their air. Out here on the trees and lakes, they really do feel a heightened sense of life, a certain sort of atmosphere I can give. This is Berlin weekend. Wind, water, white sails. Two of local citizens, one fine Sunday afternoon. Bangers, I should think, if George Grace's picture only going to what Bankers look like. It's 1932, so they have their troubles. But at weekends, they go away to their little hideaways and woods. Here yeah, they commune with nature, plan their fishing trips on the lake, see the haunt of the wild boar. And one evening, says a banker's day, and a pot down, and to a famous banker's train, on stop at Berlin. That's the paper this morning, then. Mm. Gloom as usual. 